Pastor Joey Rogers, and welcome to Prophecy Files. We're glad that you've joined us today. I want to speak to you for just a few moments about this current crisis that we're in and the residual effect of this crisis that certainly we're going to be dealing with for months to come. It deals with the economy and how many people, of course, that have already been laid off of their jobs, the stimulus that's taken place. What does that look like up ahead? And does the Bible have anything to say about the economy in the future? I believe it does. And I believe that it's important for us to understand what it says so that we can be a people that are prepared for the days that are ahead. The forecast for the future is an uncertain one by many people's account, but the Word of God has much to say concerning it. I believe that what we're seeing right now very well could be that last day revival that is taking place where the gospel is preached around the world. Consider the fact that every day almost, there are ministers that are dealing with subjects from the Word of God and sharing hope and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ around the world constantly, and then even bringing some of the social media platforms to a place of uh, crashing because there's so much happening on Sunday morning around the country and around the world that's preaching the gospel. I believe it's something that we should pay attention to, and of course, the signs that are all around us that I bring to you frequently here on Prophecy Files. And here's one that I want to deal with today, and it deals with hurricane and a pandemic, how that Florida has been dealing with and running scenarios in the event that we are continuing to deal with this pandemic as it is and stay home orders and all that's happening in the state of Florida, coupled with the possibility of a hurricane hitting our shorelines here in the state of Florida. What does that look like? And they even added on top of that, what if the terrorists were to take an opportunity during this time to uh, enact some kind of terrorist activity upon our shores or even here in the state of Florida. They're running these scenarios here in the state of Florida right now. And, you know, while we may have written it off months ago as just being a test, the reality of it now is that there is a real possibility of any of these things taking place simultaneously. And I can assure you that these are the things that cause those in leadership to tremble in their feet, that cause them to tremble. These are the things that cause men's hearts to tremble. I want to share this article with you also from uh, AP that is dealing with the coronavirus, the looming collapse of Europe's single currency. Listen carefully to this. This is some quotes from this article. In Spain, which recently overtook Italy as the epicenter of the coronavirus in Europe, the prime minister has committed some uh, 200 billion euros, 20% of the country's GDP, to alleviate the economic uh, and social consequences of this pandemic. The article continues, when asked how he would pay for that amount of spending, the prime minister replied that he was counting on financial help from Europe. The article continues, the worst growth figures in France since 1945 actually took place back in 2009. Uh, when the housing crisis and all that was taking place. But we recognize now that this economic impact of this pandemic is far greater than the crash uh, back in that day. And as a result, in this article, it continues, today, not a single European country is doing well, which means there is a limited willingness for European countries to come to each other's aid. It continues in this article, quoting from a German financial uh, advisor, he says, an almighty economic earthquake is in the making. In a few weeks or months, several large European economies will require bailout and assistant packages. These will be several times larger than anything Europe has ever seen. This article continues, as the coronavirus unleashes economic shockwaves across Europe, the European single currency, the most visible symbol of the European unification, is facing collapse. In the Eurozone, which is the monetary union of 19 of the 27 member states of the European Union, they've adopted that euro as their common currency. They're saying now that they are pr prospecting and forecasting a deep, and long-lasting recession. And this article that reads, U.S. economy deteriorating faster than anticipated 
as 80 million Americans are forced to stay at home. It says it's clear that the initial economic decline will be sharper and more painful than during the 2008 financial crisis. This article deals with the economic outlook for the future, and it states that most Americans are living, of course, paycheck to paycheck uh, when when there's good times that are about us. But this article states for us very clearly that people are not able to sustain themselves in the time that we're living if they miss two or more paychecks. This article also amplifies everything we're saying concerning the economy, that government and businesses turn attention to the eventual reopening of the $22 trillion U.S. economy. How does that happen? This article says it will be harder to start back up than it was to sustain it. Now, what's happening in our world as far as the effects of the pandemic on our economy? Well, it's very, very clear. Many of you that are watching me now have found yourself at a place where you may have lost your job and laid off. Maybe you're on uh, already collecting unemployment, and certainly this is an unprecedented time, and most businesses, uh, if they do have some uh, funds tucked back for that uh, rainy day for a hard time, are finding it very close for them in these days to sustain people for any period of time. Our government has said that they're going to send out the stimulus checks and businesses, including churches, would be able to have those available funds to help recoup the losses. But how is that going to be paid for? And what is it going to look like for our economic status, not only in the United States, but all the way around the world? Well, the Bible has something to say about that in the future. Because what you're seeing now is only the tip of the iceberg in an economic disaster that looms found in the Word of God in the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel as well. The Bible says that when the rapture of the church takes place, that this world will be plunged into a situation that will require, even in the elements and the environment that we're in right now, where one individual will rise out of the sea of people And the Bible calls that man the Antichrist. His system of governance will be one of flattery and flattering speech and peace plans that will be initially part of his uh, deal for the entirety of the world, specifically for Israel and her enemies. But in the triunity of his effect, his dominance and dictatorship will be global in its perspective, and it will involve military, it will involve the economy, and it will involve religion. Now, what is the extent of that? Well, all you've got to do is go to Revelation 13. The Bible says this in Revelation 13 of four different things that the Antichrist is going to be dealing with, specifically in the economy. First of all, power will be given to him over all kindred, tongues, and nations. Secondly, all that dwell upon the earth in verse number 8, will worship him. Thirdly, in verse 16, he will cause all, both small and great, to receive a mark. And what is the result of that mark? The Bible says in verse 17 that no man might be able to buy or sell lest they have the mark, the name, or his number. Now, we understand the scripture to tell us that that number is 666, but it doesn't necessarily have to be just that number. The Bible says either the mark, his name, or the number. This involves an economic plan of control, and if you think the terms and the uh, the things that have been coming out in our recent uh, walking up to the presidential election— of socialism and all of that conversation from presidential candidates have been something, well, ladies and gentlemen, the Antichrist will take over to such a degree that he will make socialism look pale in comparison. And people will embrace it, much like you're seeing take place right now. Runs on the banks, runs on the grocery store, all that's taking place, except the only people that will be able to function in that society under the Antichrist and under his renewed economic plan so that there is wealth distributed across the board is for you to have his name, his mark, or his number. I will tell you, it's certainly a concern of mine as I've been preaching and teaching Bible prophecy now for all of my ministry years. For 30 plus years, I have reminded people of the fact that 
when we get into a place of a vacuum of power, there will be a call for someone to rise to the occasion to take the leadership of the global environment. My friends, in that vacuum, even now, even with the power of America and the leadership that we have right now, there is a vacuum of power to answer the questions and to bring solutions to the problems that we're in right now. In that vacuum of power, out of the Bible says, out of a sea of people, the Antichrist, the beast, will rise in a crisis to solve the problems of the world. This very well could be the environment that we're in right now that is setting it up with more encroachments of government, with some that are business leaders and uh, multi-billionaires calling for a possibility of marks or some kind of ID for every person on the planet to help distribute things. These are the precursors. These are the forewarnings of what the Bible uh, has been telling us all along and what John wrote down on the island of Patmos thousands of years ago. Out of that sea of people will come the Antichrist, and out of his dictatorship will come the reestablishment of what the Bible calls Babylon the Great. Now, the elements and the environment and the atmosphere, the, the systems of Babylon of old are among us right now. Uh, it would be very easy for this old ancient empire, Babylon, back from the dead to rise. The fact is, Babylon, a very uh, an ancient city in Iraq, uh, Babylon was the absolute world leader of all commercial and financial systems uh, for 2,000 years. It was the central epicenter of financial and commercial trading and buying and selling. The Bible tells us that it is first mentioned for us in Genesis chapter 11, where we read about Nimrod and the Tower of Babel how that he erected it to be as God to control all of the entirety of the world. That spirit of Nimrod will be in the Antichrist without a doubt. Now, with that being said, this system underneath the Antichrist will rise again, and Babylon, as a literal city of financial commerce, will rise once again to become the focal point of all of the transactions financially, uh, globally, trading, every bit of it. It's all found in Revelation chapter number 17. Uh, you can find that in chapter number 18. The Antichrist economic system will make that his financial headquarters. And the prosperity, according to the scripture in Revelation chapter 18, the prosperity of Babylon the Great will be the attraction of the world, but it won't last. Now, I'm telling you about the forecast for the future and what we're seeing right now that's leading directly toward this one world economic system under the Antichrist. The Bible says in chapter 17 of the book of Revelation, it's called the mother of harlots, this Babylonian system. And God, according to the scripture, will bring down the world's idol of money and material goods to the bottom, to the brink, to the dust of the earth, toward the end of the seven-year tribulation, according to the scripture. In Revelation chapter 18, there are a number of things that Babylon is judged for. Let me run them down quickly for you. The Bible says that they will be judged for their sorceries uh, in all of the nations of the world. Number one, pride. Number two, the oppression of Israel. This is going to take place. Number three, the pleasures of sin and the luxuries of life, ignoring God. Not only ignoring God and those things, but idol worship, number four, according to the scripture. And fornication, the Bible says. And spiritism or uh, worship of the occult. There would be sorceries, and we know that to be drug abuse. And all that is taking place that surrounds that kind of atmosphere will be found here in this uh, Babylonian harlot, the Bible says, of Babylon the Great. And there will be the martyrdom of saints, according to verse number 6 and 24 of Revelation 18. What's the point? This current crisis proves to us that faith in the world system, my friend, is futile. It is fading. We have seen in just the recent few days how that the entirety of the world has come to a screeching halt. Every system, everything that people have depended upon, 
has absolutely stopped. Restaurants, banks, entertainment, sports, religion, everything has stopped. And I have to tell you that I am, I am not shocked at the fact that God has his hand in the middle of all that's taking place, knowing what's happening to shake this world and get the world's attention. And that may be hard to hear, but you need to know what the Word of God says for the future. I'm forecasting from the Word of God what is coming and what we're seeing right now. Because it will all come down, the Bible says. All the authorities of the world and of the Antichrist after the rapture takes place will come down. Why is that? Because we as the people in this world have trusted more in the riches and in the accomplishments that have become now futile and they have become such a place of uh, faulty and false a sense of security that we recognize that life is but a vapor, as James has said. Our hope can only be built, my friends, not on the systems of man, but on the authority and the power of God's Word. Now, what is taking place right now in our world is leading this world to the worship of the beast, the Antichrist that is coming, the beast system. And I can assure you that this world will go headlong into that situation. And this global pandemic is showing us once again how important that it is that we direct our worship, our attention, and our focus back to the God of the Bible. I can assure you that one of the individuals that was standing in the Rose Garden a few days ago who owns a uh, business that is able to produce pillows for people has been mocked for saying to people, I encourage you to pray and read your Bible. The vice president of the United States has been mocked for his call for people to get on their knees instead of staying on the internet. This is a system that is showing itself very much right now. But I can assure you of this, that one day very soon, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. So what are we supposed to do as believers between now and then, between now and the coming of the Lord? Well, the Bible says it very clear. Jesus said in Matthew 24 and 44, be ready for the Son of Man is coming in an hour that you do not expect. Jesus is speaking here to the terminal generation, and I believe we are that generation that will see the coming of the Lord. I also believe, my friends, that it's important for us to heed every warning that's found in the Word of God. Because one day, very soon, he's going to appear when people are not expecting him. Could that be the time? I believe we're living in these last days. I believe the signs are all around us, and this is one more sign in this global pandemic of how important that it is that we are doing exactly what Jesus said. What is it that he's saying to us? He's saying, I want you to be ready, be watchful. Don't ignore the signs. Be alert. Be sober. Don't be caught up in all of the systems of this world. He said also, you should, while you're watching, you should pray. Pray that there are labors that are sent into the harvest. Pray for your leaders. Pray for your pastors. One article that I read the other day is saying that in Europe, there is now becoming a deficiency of religious leaders because they're dying because of the coronavirus in many areas. My friends, it's important for us to, as believers, pray for one another, pray for our leaders, and pray that our hearts are prepared for the coming of the Lord. What else does he want us to do? He wants us to encourage one another. So while you're sitting at home, or maybe you're on your job, maybe uh, you may have extra time on your hands right now, take the opportunity on social media to encourage someone. Don't get caught up in the spin of this world and the news media. Keep your focus upon the things of God and keep your faith rooted and grounded in the Word of God, encouraging one another so much the more, the Bible says, as we see the day approaching. And then I can assure you that it's important for us to travel light. What do you mean by that? I mean, cast off everything that's not important. All the things that right now are coming down to a very simple few things in our hands that we can count on, our family, the things that are valued most. I encourage you to cast off things maybe of bitterness or unforgiveness or things that would hinder you from being sensitive to the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Now, you've heard me say this for years, but I can assure you, Jesus Christ is coming soon. And he's coming in an hour that we think not. And if anything should be getting our attention through this pandemic, it should be the fact 
that we are reminded that we are but vapor. The Bible says our life is as a vapor. It's here for a moment and it's gone. And we're seeing that moment by moment. And if you're not ready to meet Jesus Christ, if you haven't invited him in to be the Lord of your life, why don't you do that right now? Why don't you surrender your life to Jesus Christ right now? Why don't you make him the Lord of your life so that when the trumpet of God sounds, you'll be ready. And I can assure you the Bible says as we are right now on the very day of resurrection in this environment, in, these, in the atmosphere of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, as sure as he got up from the grave, you and I will do the same. That's a promise, and God always keeps his promise. Thank you for joining me for Prophecy Files. I pray this has been an encouragement to you, insight and foresight, because I believe beyond the shadow of any doubt that Jesus Christ is coming soon. We'll see you next time.